Hello and welcome to episode 63 of the Spotlight Games Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick, and joining me, as always, is my sweet dumpster boy to talk about Spider-Man 2, the new Horizon games. Maybe there's a Last of Us 3 out there. Let's kick it over to Cayman and say, hey, what's up, Cayman? How we doing? I'm doing great, Patrick. Thanks for having me on. I've always wanted to be here. That's what you always say on the other podcast, because apparently... <laughs> You're never there, so the, it's just the, a fun little. It's a fun little joke. It's a fun little, you know, the podcast. Little that gag, I'm on. little yeah, fun little gag, gag, little gag, gag and gooped. Because uh, uh, you know, I mean, I'm on the show 95 percent of the time. So what's what's a fun little joke to say? I'm never there, but to say, you know what I mean? That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Cayman. <laughs> yes, I, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that today's show is going to get weird, and I'm excited about it. <laughs> Oh, is it going to get weird, Patrick? Maybe, maybe. I just, I have kind of a weird vibe. I just ate some some Indian chicken wings. Oh, some, some Nandori chicken wings. Mm. Uh, and no, Tandori, not Nandori. I misspoke. Uh, what and, about Andori? Ooh, it's from the Star Wars chicken wings. The Star Wars chicken wings. The Star Wars show that you still haven't watched. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I just, I have a, I have a feeling that that we're going to get weird, and and I'm, I'm ready to get weird. But we have a whole lot of video games to talk about because this is the Spotlight Games Podcast where each week we spotlight the latest and the greatest in the world of video games. You can get it by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Spotlight Games Pod or by searching for Spotlight Games in your favorite podcast app. And hey, you can be on the show by tuning in as we record live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, which is what's happening right now on Twitch.tv slash Spotlight Games Pod. So be sure to follow us there so you're notified when we go live so you can be part of the conversation. Cayman. As of recording right now, live, it's Tuesday, December mm-hmm. 20th. And you know what Tuesday means? Mm-hmm. Save Trash Cinema, the podcast. Mm-hmm. Trashmas is on its way to a close because Christmas is right around the corner. It's true. Tell, <sighs> tell the folks at home what we got cooking up this week. Actually, Patrick, is it me or is it really hot in here? Oh, it's so, bo- it's God, so warm. It, is it? I think, hold on. It's just really hot in here. I just got to oh, get this. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at this. Get, oh, I just got to hold on. Let me. Oh, get myself ready for some Christmas talk, baby. What is that war on Christmas veteran? Wow. Yeah. That is boys, it's hard out here. All right. I got my my milk. Got some Copenhagen over there? You got, you got a dip in? Got my dip in. Got my nipples right here. Wow. So where there's nipples. That I am nipples. I am befumbled. I this is not something that I knew was happening. Uh, this is belly. news to me. What does that say? Christmas. Where's my belly button? Oh, nope. There it is. <laughs> what does that say? Christmas life. Yeah, bro. Xmas life. I'm a war on Christmas veteran, Patrick. And let me tell you, sir, today released the last episode of Trashmas. And uh, we covered Silent Night, Deadly Night. My personal trash miss favorite. And um, let me just prime up the audience by telling him this. I got multiple text messages this morning, Patrick. Uh huh. All of them being like, holy hell, this is the grossest episode <laughs> that you guys have ever done. And I was like, I'm sorry, what? They were like, this episode was nasty. You guys were nasty on this nasty. episode. And yeah, you know, I can't disagree, Patrick. I mean, they don't call them the video nasties for nothing, Cayman. It's true. And let me tell you, I mean, I would tell you, but this is our more toned down show where we don't talk about the disgusting stuff we do on <laughs> SCC. Yeah. Um, honestly, the episode is fucking hysterical. Uh, it is also very gross. We get we get we get naughty. We talk episode. a lot about snowballing, which if you don't know what that is and you're of age, go look it up. I didn't know what it was. I learned what it was live on air. Uh, mm-hmm. And and of course, when I learn something like that, I'm going to mm-hmm. I'm going to lean into it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm I'm honestly I'm like speechless about your look right now. I really was never expecting. This. Oh, I'm sorry. Is this do you want to see more? <laughs> yes, actually, I do. Wow. I. This is this is one of those ones, folks, where if, if you're listening, if you're driving your car, you're you're yeah, delivering just... your UPS packages for Christmas, you gotta pull over, go to the YouTube link in the description of the podcast episode, might I add. The the link to our YouTube videos are always in the description of the podcast. 
on your favorite you, podcast app. You want to know something really funny about this whole thing? Hmm. You know where I got this shirt? My father-in-law. Oh, wow. My father-in-law gifted this shirt to me. The pro- The thing was, he gifted it to me to wear last year on Spotlight. However, it showed up late. Mm. So I wasn't able to do this joke last year. This is something that you've kept in the pocket for yeah. a year. Which and normally when I'm really excited about a joke I'm going to tell, like it'll end up slipping out eventually. Oh, yeah. You're... you're in my circle, you're infamous for spoiling secrets. Yeah. I'm and the bad second, at it. the second you know it, it's like, Ooh, here's your Christmas present. What yeah. I'm buying you. That's Which true. by the way. Yeah. Hold please. We'll hold. I'm holding. Patrick is walking away. Patrick is sneaking back over. You could probably hear him fumbling around in the darkness. I, this week, you know, let's just, let's just talk a little bit more before we jump into the show. Yeah. This week, <laughs> My Christmas gift from one Cam Darty the dumpster boy was delivered, and I don't have it fully put together. But for our video listeners, video watchers rather, I've been gifted this Nintendo Switch BMO holder, where you can put your Switch into the face of BMO from Adventure Time, if you're unfamiliar, and play. And let me tell you what, this is a top fiver folks <laughs> of Christmas gifts because the crazy thing is, Cam had no idea how much I love BMO. And no how much BMO is huge in the Schweigert household. We got a BMO blanket. We got a BMO tin. We got like, we got all sorts of BMO things. Mm. Uh, and here it is. My little BMO, BMO noir. You know, it's funny. I was just belligerent when I purchased that and I was just laughing my ass off. And I was like, I'm getting this present for Patrick. I sobered <laughs> up the next day and was like, what the fuck? Oh no. What have I Did done? you do? What the where in your where 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 was your mind, bro? That's what I was telling myself. I was asking that question, Patrick. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Glad mm-hmm. to know apparently that I'm better like that. So yeah, I'm just gonna I, keep doing it. I, it seems to me that you make your best decisions when you're just hammered. Yeah. So <laughs> brother, let me yeah. tell you something. Let me brother. tell you some brother. <laughs> Can so just like slurp back my fucking high yeah. life and your little flannel koozie yes sir I, I said i was like do we have any like old packs of cigarettes just sitting around that I can, like <laughs> when i do this joke i can have like a cigarette hanging out of my mouth guess what we don't have any cigarettes and i was Shocked. not gonna go buy a pack of cigarettes just for this joke as much as i love you and as much as i commit to the bit not doing hashtag it. commit to the bit my hashtag question to you my, my last question to you on this uh on this great bit before we move on and talk about what we've been playing which is how we always start our uh shows here the War on Christmas veteran hat. Is that a hat that you plan on wearing in the public? You know, um, there's been multiple occasions in which I was like, because I got this this hat as a gift from Lucas. Mm, okay. um, one of our friends, Lucas, gave, gave, gifted me this hat. And I was actually going to wear it to my family's Christmas last year. <laughs> and Sydney was like, please, Cayman, just don't do that. It's just going to be a fight. I was like, I know you're right. But like, but... but Maybe my maybe I'm interpreting a war on Christmas vet in the reverse, but like if you're a veteran of the war on Christmas, you fought for Christmas, right? Or you fought against Christmas. Which which one is it? Is Here's that, is the that thing. Up to interpretation. I think it really is up to interpretation. It could go either way, Patrick. I could say that I am one of the people who says happy holidays to everyone. Sure. Could be one of the people that says Merry Christmas. Do you know what the truth is? I say nothing. Yeah, you don't you give don't a, speak to people. Here's the thing. I don't give a fuck about Christmas. I don't give a fuck about anyone's festive winter holidays. Hmm. I just don't care. Do you you famously hate the winter solstice? I famously hate the winter solstice. Yeah. I'm it, a fall guy. All right. <laughs> Both what Thanksgiving the, is your favorite? <laughs> this is just, I'm a Hall- I'm like more of a Halloween person. Thanksgiving is a little too close to Christmas for me. More of an autumn, I suppose. More of an autumn. So like Sydney Alfredo in the chat. Bah humbug on you too, or to you too, which in Christmas terms means get fucked. Oh, Cayman. <laughs> so, Cayman, let's jump into the show. I want to hear about what you've been playing, and I want to yeah. talk about what I've been playing. So, Cayman, mm. tell us and the folks at home, what's, what's been on your PlayStation these last few days, or, what, or whatever system it is you're playing. 
So I actually, I guess, so, so last week I was playing Ghostwire Tokyo and um, I don't know. I was just like, yeah, yeah, this game's fine. Um, but I wanted to try something out that might have been a bit more topical for our listeners. And sure. so I opted to go with, um, I opted to play Witcher 3, mm. which I know came out like, feels like a decade ago. Honestly, might have been a decade ago. Yeah, let's, let's look that up while, you, while you keep talking. But the thing is, and this is very important and why I'm playing it, is because The Witcher 3 just got a next gen or a current gen or whatever this gen is that we're on in terms of consoles. It just got a new patch that dropped. 19 May 2015. Okay, so seven years ago, this game came out. Almost eight years ago, this game came out. And they just released this huge patch, highly anticipated. It introduced a lot of new things in terms of content. Um, it was free. It's free for everyone. Mm, so if you have that. a copy of the game, you already, you already get it. Um, but this patch includes a lot of interesting stuff. And I was very much was like, I want to get into it, play some. I probably put about six, seven hours maybe into it so far. Um, so here's basically, I'll, I'll give you a rundown of some of the improvements that you'll see if you want to get back into The Witcher. First... This patch includes all of the DLC. Mm, awesome. So you, you get all the DLC included in this. So if you haven't played the DLC before, guess what? You got it. If you've already played Witcher 3, you haven't played the DLC, but you want to just play the DLC, guess what? This patch also includes the ability to jump straight into the DLC. It levels you up. Cool. It gives you gear that you need necessary to be able to compete in the DLC at that level that the DLC is. So you can skip playing the main game entirely it'll just you don't get any main game quest it'll just dump you into whatever the whichever dlc you want to do and you just go ham all right so that's the first big thing second thing this patch there's two different modes you have performance mode and you have um ray tracing which is the mode which I just call graphics mode i don't know man call it something cooler than just ray tracing mode so performance <laughs> mode uh, the game is allegedly, and then there's been a lot of hubbub of back and forth, especially from PC players who feel like that this is a lie. But basically, it's supposed to be 60 frames per second native um, with an upscaling with your graphics so that you have your graphics. I think they say it's it's basically, an, uh, I'm trying to think what it, what it is, but it's like 4K, but not 4K. Like it's not native 4K. It's like up res to try to be 4K. Sure, sure, sure. There's a, there's term, a, for yeah, there's a term for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, if you do performance mode, you can play like that. If you don't do performance mode and you go with ray tracing mode, it locks you in at 30 frames per second and you get ray tracing. Um, so graphically, I've gone back and forth just to check to see like which one is better. And honestly, here's the thing. Um even the game in its performance mode looks really good. Like the graphics are still enhanced. So it is, it looks better than the original Witcher, which the original Witcher still looked great. However, ray tracing mode is just outrageous. Oh, sure. Everything like in terms of like shadows look so cool. There's like reflections on the water that match the surroundings, which is also incredible. When the sun sets, everything just looks fucking gorgeous. It looks really good. And so you can choose between the two. I'm going ray tracing mode because I don't know, like I, Patrick and I've had conversations where basically like for me, I don't really tell a huge difference. Patrick was like, I couldn't tell a huge difference until I went back from 60 frames back to 30. So like maybe if you play your games at 60 frames per second all the time, and if you're on console, that's rarely ever happens. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, you'll probably be fine just playing it in ray tracing mode. But if you're on PC, then the game doesn't work at all because you should use your PC for taxes or Excel spreadsheets. Well, you can do that shit mm. in like 250 frames per second. I don't know. <laughs> so, so those are kind of like this is like the big thing from the patch, but that's not it. There are little things that you don't notice that are completely new and are so cool. First, they've changed the camera. Ooh. So this is something, and you and it gives gives you the ability to change them back and forth. So what's really cool about this is the camera now is zoomed in closer, and your and Geralt is offset. 
So he's to the left of the screen now instead of cool. dead center. So it's more modernized. Like you would have games like Grand Theft Auto. Well, not Grand Theft Auto, but like uh, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 was like one big one. God of War kind of does a similar thing. Yeah. A lot of third person shooters will do that. You can go back to the original camera style, but this gives you like a fresh way to look at things and it feels great. Cool. Um, second thing is, is you have the ability to go in and alter costumes for characters. So that their costumes match the Netflix show. Oh, that's cool. So the thing is, is all of the adjustments that you can do costume wise are really cool. Here's the one thing that's not uh -oh. is I don't know if anyone ever remembers the Nilf guards, the Nilf guardians, their armor in the Netflix show was awful. Oh, it looks sure. like dried dog turds, like just wrinkly ass dog turds. And it's like, so like they don't look very good, but you can change it on and off. So if you want like the traditional garbs, you can do that. You can make Yennefer. So is it all or nothing? Like everyone looks like the show, or no one looks like the show, or no? You can individually select which characters cool. that have alternate costumes. They've also included a bunch of really cool DLC um, armor sets uh, that you get free access to if you just go to a certain location a little ways into the game. Um, those are brand new to this one particular patch. There's a lot of brand new weapons and brand new armors that are completely optional. You can pick them up or not pick them up. It's entirely up to you, but they're really cool looking. A lot of Netflix original uh, things like swords, you know, armor, whatnot that is from the show is in this game. Um, and then there's just also they've added in like a bunch of really cool new DLC story, like little side quests. That Was that are pulled new from DLC the show. or yes. nude DLC? I wish. Well, there is nudity in the game. Okay. So, okay. Uh, you know, I just didn't know if they be... were like added Geralt's dick in this game. I mean, I mean, shit. I mean, in theory, you can play all of Cyberpunk but fucking naked. So That's I true. wouldn't be shocked if you could in this game too. Uh, but no, they've they've included a bunch of DLC that's specific to the Netflix show, and apparently that's some really from cool. the books, from what I heard. Um, and then those are like way further into the game. So like while you're playing, you can go on like some like bounties and whatnot that like Geralt goes on in the show. You can then do those stories too, which is really fucking cool. The game still feels great. And it just <sighs> now with like with ray tracing looks fantastic. You can play 60 frames probably feels better. if That's your thing. But like it, it's really interesting, right? Like that you can take a game that's seven, almost eight years old. And just drop a patch for it. And it's free. And then the player count has like skyrocketed once again. Okay, man. Well, everything you're saying is very concerning. Sure. Because now I want to go play The Witcher 3. I know, and, man. Because uh, I never played any of the DLC. I, mm. I played this game a year or two after it came out uh, on console. So like 2016 or 2017. And loved it. Mm -hmm. And... uh but it was still new enough that the DLC was like 40 or 50 bucks. And I just didn't want sure. to spend that. So I never played it. But uh, now that it's apparently included in this upgrade, it's like, give me that. Tony Thomas in the chat, handsome Tony in the chat, Witcher three top five best games. Music also amazing. I don't yeah. immediately disagree with you. Like it is, it is up there for me for sure. So I definitely, this, this has me excited uh, and to hear all this new content outside of just, I would have assumed that it's just, they just, it just looks better. No, there's so much, and I think that's what's crazy, is this is entirely free. As long as you own a copy. And the thing is, you can get a copy of The Witcher right now, like on PSN, for like 10 bucks. This is very much like OG, cyber, or not Cyberpunk, this is very much yeah. OG CD Projekt Red. Like I, I genuinely think that the reason this is the way it is, I don't think they would have charged for the patch anyway. But I think all the new stuff that's been added in, I really think is them being like, hey, guys, we royally fucked up on with Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk yeah, and we yeah. lost a lot of your trust. And we understand that. And we're here to gain it back. Here is our first step towards that. Um, and yeah, I think that that's genuinely like how this probably all sh shook out in the end when it was internal conversations. And to their point, to their credit, though, like it's a hell of a way to win trust back is by being like, hey, Here's here's our apology to you is this massive like overhaul to a game that was already 10 out of 10 for a good portion of people. Sure. Yeah, I who You know what the highest rated game on Metacritic right now is, Patrick? For 2022 Wild Hunt. It's The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt next gen. Wow. That's I mean it's not surprising. 
Actually, Christmas. it kind of is because Elden Ring is one of the highest rated games ever. But not as high as Witcher 3 Next Gen. Now, if you're playing Speaking of PC, Elden Ring, it sucks. So, yeah, sorry. Speaking of Elden Ring. Yeah, tell me about Elden Ring. I've been playing some Elden Ring came in. And, you know, I'm not going to go too deep because we've talked a lot about Elden Ring this year. You've sure. talked a bunch about it. But we've not necessarily talked a lot about my perspective other than I wasn't vibing with it. Yep. I wasn't vibing with it a few weeks ago. Or, I mean, not a few months ago, several months ago. I tried it again. Just like, ah, I don't know. I just, there's so much to do and they don't tell me anything. There's not even quest lines that I can track. But today came in. Mm-hmm. I booted it back up and I played it for about an hour. And I hope that my session today continues when I play, probably after we're done recording. Because I had a lot of fun. Yeah. In this hour. I don't know what it is that changed. I think I just was like, you know what? This past weekend, I was speaking with the uh, strongest man I know. His name is Mario. Uh, and um, we were just talking about Elden Ring. And he was telling me some things, got my, got my mind kind of swirling a little bit. <clears throat> Excuse mm-hmm. me. And I just, I let go, Cayman, as so often we always should. It's just, just let sure. go. Sure. I just let go. I, I ran around. I just explored. I didn't pull up my phone to see, like, what do I need to do? I didn't, you know, do all these things. I just ran around and I found this pumpkin head man, fought him. I found j- these two trolls, like, carrying this yep. giant, like, cage of some kind, followed them, opened sure. it up, got a great axe. So, I don't know. I'm going to see how how long how much longer I stick with it, but I finally for the first time in the several times that I have sat down to play Elden Ring, had a good time. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to see how, how that goes. So, I just I wanted a little quick update because it's something that we've been following along a little bit. Um but came in. I've been playing something else. I actually I've heard. I finished playing something else. That's true. You did, didn't you? I started and finished playing something else in the time since last podcast. Although I, I did play it a little bit before. Mm-hmm. If Sydney's still in the chat, she was one of the few that watched this piece of content that never saw the light of day because my sound wasn't working. A game called Inscription. Mm. I was I streamed it on the PC several months ago uh, in an attempt to see if streaming would work on my laptop, and it doesn't which is why I still haven't done it anymore. Um, but I played it on Steam Deck, came in. Mm-hmm. And that game is fucking awesome. Friend of the show, Jerrica, last time they were on the show, uh, told us about how much she loved Inscription. And she wasn't wrong. That game is really special. It's awesome. So if you don't know what Inscription is, it is... It's out now on PlayStation Switch. I think it's on like everything now. Uh, it's like 20 bucks, so super low price. But it is a uh it's like a spooky card battling game. Uh and I've I've learned this year that I'm I'm a big into card battlers. Like Marvel Snap, one mm-hmm. of my games of the year. Uh earlier this year I played Slay the Spire, which is another card battler. So I've I've learned that I'm very big on card battlers, but inscription uh, so it's like it has roguelike elements so like if you die you start over you start building a new deck but there and like i have to be really careful in how i talk about it because i something that's really Mm -hmm. special about this game is all like the amount of things that are revealed throughout it both from a story perspective and from like an entire game perspective like without saying too much this game changes Mm -hmm multiple times mm, so it's like bullet storm <laughs> what are you what are you disrespecting a, a veteran of the war on christmas yes i am Shit, son. i'm about to spit on you i i i, I you know i you think you... i would expect the bullet storm you said you're gonna spit on me so are we talking about snowball mode? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> if you listen to Save Trash Cinema, you might find out. Uh, oh, awful. Vile. Vile behavior. Um, Look at me. What did you expect? <laughs> true. True. You are wearing another man's skin I with am. Christmas lights wrapped all around you uh, and a hat that says 
war on Christmas veterans. So yeah, what did I expect really? Um, but this game, if, if you have like, go watch a trailer and if watching the trailer interests you at all, go play this game because similar to kind of like, honestly, similar to what I said last week about immortality. Like it's, it's doing things that I've never really experienced in a game before. Mm. Very, very different than immortality. Although there is slight overlap with immortality. Oh no. Uh, But I won't say how or why. Um, But yeah, it's just, it's a really cool game. It took me like six, seven hours tops. Um, And when you beat the game, there is like another mode where you can basically play like what what is my favorite part of the game you can play that like on repeat like in a roguelike uh Mm. without all the story stuff uh but yeah really really like if this game came out this year it would be like a strong front runner for my game of the year really Uh, knowing that i now that i finish it because like rose and i've been playing immortality a little bit more I won't go far in that because I, you know, I talked for like 20 minutes about immortality last week, but I'm not as high on it as I was last week. I'm still very high on it, Mm -hmm. but we've, we've now put in another like four hours, five hours and we hit credits at one point. And I'm like, I still don't understand like what the story is here. So I think we like accidentally triggered credits. Like there, I'm having some, some confusion with Mm -hmm. the game, which is sounding my experience a little bit, but Mm. inscription, man. 10 out of 10. So <clears throat> question for you, Patrick. Yeah. You're big into card battlers. Yeah. Does this mean your next game is going to be Marvel Midnight Suns? I almost, which is a, it's card based. Yep. I almost purchased Marvel Midnight Suns, uh, yesterday. And then I remembered I hadn't bought Christmas presents for like six people. And I was like, Nope, that'll be an after Christmas thing. Uh, but I, it is a lot higher on my anticip, like on my pick up next list mm, for sure, sure. 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 If I, if I'm able to get to it before dead space, like I'll probably buy it and play it before dead space. But if I don't get around to picking up a new game before dead space, I'll probably play it after dead space, which is like mid January. Mm-hmm. Um, but cause I'm really excited about dead space, but, um, but yeah, I'm knowing that it is a card battler, but like in a strategy RPG way, definitely has me more interested in that game now than I was three weeks ago. Sure. Uh, because yeah, inscription I've, I've learned, I've definitively learned. I love a card battler, which I never would have expected. Uh, but cause yeah, I honestly also can't stop playing Marvel snap, but well, fair Cayman. Yes. Do you, it, it does inscription do anything for you? Like, do you think you're going to play inscription? That's a good question. No is an acceptable answer. I'm just curious. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, so I'm torn, right? Because on one hand, the everyone seems to be really high on it. Yeah. Um. On the other hand, I'm real dumb, and sure. things that include strategy, I'm normally very bad at. Uh. So, part of me is worried that I play it, and then I just feel bad about myself. Sure. Because I'm dumb. Let's be honest. What if I told you that the card systems in this game are way simpler than Marvel Snap? Interesting. In that there are like three types of cards. Hmm. And within those types, like there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of kind of differentiation, but I never like struggled with strategy in this game. I do like strategy games a little more than you do, but Mm -hmm. the, the difficulty with this game wasn't ever, how do I outsmart my opponent? Honestly, sometimes it just came down to RNG, like random generation. Like, did I get a good draw? Sure. If not, well, because like with the, um, you know, like how in Hades you go through a room and then you like, have a couple choices on what the next room would be. Sure. It has that like a similar mm, mechanic okay. where once you like have an event, sometimes the the map will split and you'll go to a different like a you'll get to choose between one of two events. And they're like there aren't very many event types. Like there are a lot of simplicities to this game that I think are good. Mm-hmm. Uh and, and I liked that they were like that. Um but at the same time like if you are concerned that you that it might not vibe with you, 
I guess the good news is it, it's definitely with it only being 20 bucks, like whenever it goes on sale, at most it'll be 15 bucks. Sure. Throw it no, yeah, I th- yeah, I think I think so. I think I'll end up playing it, yeah. Um, I think there's the higher likelihood of him playing that before I do Marvel Midnight Suns. Yeah. Uh, just be, look, Marvel Midnight Suns sounds incredible. Um, I d- had just played uh, XCOM one time. and Yeah. <sighs> that was bad. I played a little bit of XCOM once as well, and it didn't vibe with me as much. So I'm, I'm hoping that the card mechanic and the Marvel aspect mm. of it will will bring yeah. me in more. Because... I think so. Yeah, I think so too. I will say, hold on, just get this holding Apparently on witcher now you can actually adjust the difficulty of gwent oh really which was not something that i ever did before like when i played like i really loved gwent i probably put like 10 hours alone just into playing gwent so which is Me interesting because like i like you know so like i don't know maybe inscription would like just absolutely hit for me um i don't know it's so maybe. good it's so, so good. Yeah, I definitely I did. I think that's that's one. I don't have a lot of time off during the holidays like most people do. Um, yeah. Just because I'm a busy beaver right now. Busy boy. Buzz, 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 buzz. And um, yeah, I don't know. I I my thing is, I think like it's more so like what's going to scratch the itch I'm looking yeah. for. Yeah. Um, because as much as I was enjoying Ghostwire Tokyo, I just it didn't hit yeah. the way I wanted it to. Like, where's God of War? God damn that game. <sighs> hit for me so and then of course mike he's finishing up callisto protocol apparently he's run into an issue in which he can't survive oh no did he get into one of these situations where like he he doesn't have enough health to get through a thing and he's just stuck no damn that sucks from what from our conversation we had a a couple matches of rocket league earlier and uh he was just like, dude, I'm fu- I'm fucked. Like I'm stuck Damn. here. I, he's like, I don't understand how people. He's like, I'm playing on easy. I don't understand how people can get through this on Whoa. Like, normal. I'm like, yeah, that's that yeah. And like, so you know, but like, I, I've got I've got the sync lights now. Uh, Sid gave me my Christmas present. Yeah. If you haven't seen this wild, like what a sync light does, why don't you go? This is shameless plug. So go to the, it, the STC TikTok. Save trash. That's it's at Save Trash Cinema on TikTok. We don't post much ever, ever. Uh, but it did post one of the intro to Silent Night, Deadly Night with the hue sync lights up, and it'll give you just like a, a very. It, it gives you a great example of like how this elevates your like movie watching experience yeah. to like a completely different level. So I definitely go check that out. But just like you know, I want to play spooky games because that's like yeah for that shit, right? <laughs> Next time you play The Witcher, film a little video with the sync lights. Send it my way. I would love to see it with some with a video game in action. Oh yeah, hundred percent. There's like a certain moment in God of War. I don't want to spoil it, but basically it's just a beautiful. Oh yeah, I know what. I know exactly what you're talking about. Absolutely, and I'm like, I really want to figure out a way to replay that moment, but it's like thirty hours into the fucking game. Yeah, like I want to get there again to do it with the sync lights because I can only imagine that shit would be fucking outrageous. Yeah. So Ooh, that was one of my favorite fights in that game. 